Hello and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome, glad to have you. If you are a returning viewer, glad to have you back. Either way, when you get to the end of the video, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who you think might benefit from watching it. That's why I do it, to help you and other people learn. So this video is the second in our series on ANCOVA. So in the first video, we talked about what ANCOVA is, what its goals are, and sort of the theoretical background of what it does. In this video, we're gonna do a bit more hands-on. So what we're gonna do is run an ANOVA, look at the results, look at the output, then we're gonna insert a covariate, run that and get the output, and then we're gonna compare the output of both side by side to see exactly what putting the covariate into the model actually did so you understand what its presence does to the output and of course the interpretation. So let's go ahead and get started. So this video is made possible by The Great Courses Plus. For more information, see the link in the description below. And since you are here to learn, it's a great resource to check out. So here is our data from the first video. What we have are the study skill scores for first year, second year, and third year college students. So you can see year one scores, year two scores, and year three scores. So these are our levels and our independent variable. And we are curious whether or not there's a difference among them, like a typical one-way ANOVA. Now what we also have are those students' GPAs. So that is our covariate. So what we can do is run a regular one-way ANOVA using the year one, year two, and year three scores. We'll see what that gets us. Then we will go in and use the GPA as a covariate and then see what that does to our output. So we're gonna run it both ways, with and without the covariate of GPA. So a quick reminder of the two main purposes of ANCOVA. Number one, to increase the sensitivity of the test for the main effects and interactions by reducing the error term. That's important, especially in this video, talking about reducing the error term. So the error term is adjusted for, and hopefully reduced by, the relationship between the dependent variable and the covariate or covariates. So the covariates are used to assess the, quote, noise, where the noise is the undesirable variance in the dependent variable that is estimated by the scores on the covariate. Now that's a mouthful, but just what I want you to get out of that is one of the purposes of ANCOVA is to reduce the error term, it kind of accounts for the noise, and it looks for the relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable. Number two is to adjust the means on the levels of the dependent variable itself to what they would be if all subjects scored equally on the covariate. So what we're essentially talking about here is sort of normalizing the dependent variable by saying, okay, what if every one of our subjects scored equally on that covariate? So the differences between the subjects on the covariate are removed so that presumably the only differences that remain are related to the effects of the grouping independent variables. In this case, year one, year two, and year three. So the covariates enhance the prediction of the dependent variable, but again, there is no implication of causality. So this will allow us to adjust the means on the dependent variable itself to what they would be if all subjects scored equally on the covariates. So in an ANOVA, we have our total sum of squares or SST. That is then partitioned into the sum of squares due to the main effects and interactions over here on the left, and the SSC or sum squared due to error over here on the right. The SSC, once we introduce a covariate in ANCOVA, gets split again. So we have whatever remaining SSC we have, and then some of that error is then allocated to the covariate. So that results in a reduced, ideally, a reduced SSE. So what does that do to our F statistic? So if we look at F, that is our mean sum of squares, for the, for the model divided by the mean square error. So when we do that, the reduced SSC leads to reduced MSC. Smaller MSC leads to larger F statistic, thus increasing the power of the F test. 
So basically, because we reduce the SSC due to the presence of the covariate, we decrease the value of this denominator in the F statistic, and we increase the power of the F test. So here is an exaggerated visual of ENCOVA. So here are our means to start with. Then we introduce the covariate and our means are adjusted. So maybe the first mean goes here, maybe the second mean moves there, maybe the third mean goes there. So the location of the means change when we assume or we adjust them for the fact that all of our participants scored equally on the covariate. So here is ANOVA versus ANCOVA in SPSS. Now, the thing about software is everyone seems to use a different one of them. Um, I'm just using SPSS here because it's very easy to look at and read and I can point to the boxes and say where we put things. But whether you're using JUMP or R or Python or Minitab or something else, you'll see something similar. But I just want to point out here in SPSS, it's very straightforward about what goes where. Over here on the left-hand side, we have a regular ANOVA. So our fixed factors in this case are year. So the year one students, the year two students, and the year three students. Our dependent variable is their score on the study skills assessment. So it's very straightforward one-way ANOVA. Now over here on the right, we have the ANCOVA. Same dialog box, but we just insert the covariate. So now if we look over in the lower right, we can see the GPA covariate over here on the right. And in SPSS, that's really the only difference. So you will have to refer to the documentation of your stats package to see how you would insert these into that. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some output. So this slide is actually just the regular one-way ANOVA, no covariate. So we're just looking at the differences between year one students, year two students, and year three students on their study skills assessment score. So the first thing we notice are our F statistic and significance value, or p-value. Our F stat is 0.256, it's not very high. And we can see that in our significance value there of 0.777. So if we're looking at this at 0 0.05 level, that's obviously not significant. So what else can we see here? Let's look at our sum of squares. So look at our error sum of squares. It's 2,378. Now look at our total sum of squares, 2,445. So if we look at just our sum of squares, almost all of our total sum of squares is actually error. So almost all of it is error. And that's why our F value over here is 0.256 and our significance level or significance value is 0.777. So it's the relationship between our sum of squares as the error as related to the total sum of squares. And you can see that again, almost our entire sum of squares is error. So now let's look at our ANCOVA with the covariate, the GPA covariate. Now look at our F value and significance. So now we have 11.474 for our F value and our significance value is 0 0.000 or just less than 0 0.001. So that is significant. So now our model is significant. Now look at our error sum of squares. Now it's 808. But of course our total sum of squares is the same. So just because we introduced the covariate, our sum of squares does not change. Our total sum of squares does not change. What changes is how we allocate those sum of squares. So now the error term is 808.566. Now let's look side by side. So over here on the left, we have our ANOVA. Over here on the right, we have our ANCOVA. So first, of course, we have our F value and our significance. So 0.256 changed to 11.474. That's a massive increase. And our significance level or significance value went from 0.777 to 0.000 or less than 0.001. So a massive change in our corrected model or our model F and significance value. Look at our error term. We went from 2378 down to 808. So that's a, quite a large decrease in the error sum of squares. Yet our total sum of squares, again, stayed the same. We can also point out our adjusted R square. So we went from negative 0.08 to point or positive 0.611. 
So you can see that our adjusted R squared or the amount of variance accounted for by our model went up significantly. Let's also look at our GPA covariate in the ANCOVA over here on the right. So first, our GPA sum of squares is 1,569. So that represents a large chunk of our total sum of squares of 2445. We can go across and see that the F value is 33, which is very, very high. And again, the significance value is less than 0 0.001. So you can see that once we introduce the GPA covariate into the model, all of a sudden, a large portion of the sum of squares was accounted for by our covariate. Now, if you're curious about how the F statistic is calculated, you can look down here at the bottom. So on the left, we have 33.762. That's our model mean square divided by our error. So 132.127, that's how we get our 0.256. And of course, over here on the right, we can see that our model has a mean square of 545 divided by our error, which is 47.563. That's how we get our 11.474 F value. So just look at the presence of that covariate, how it reallocated the sum of squares and how it changed our F values and significance values. So here's a summary. Now in both, our total sum of squares is the same. And again, I'm kind of rounding here just for the sake of space. So total sum of squares was two, four, four, five in both. Now the sum of squares for our model went from 67 to 16 over 1600. So our mean square of the model went from a low of 33, 762 to 545, 748. Now the error sum of squares went down significantly. Now remember what we talked about before. The idea of ANCOVA is to use that covariate to reduce our error sum of squares. So we went from 2378 down to 809. So our mean square error was 132.127 and it went down to 47.563. So our F statistic was very low with the ANOVA, 0.256, and went up to 11.474. Our model significance value was 0.777 in the ANOVA and less than 0 0.001 in the ANCOVA. And of course, our adjusted square went up significantly. So you can see what happened to all these statistics with the presence of that covariate. Now the question is, why? Why did this happen? Well, here is the relationship between our covariate and our dependent variable. So GPA versus study skills. So you can tell right off the bat that there is a very strong linear relationship between our covariate and our dependent variable. And actually, if you look at the correlation, the correlation is 0.795. That's an extremely high correlation. It's a significant correlation. So when we have a covariate that is this linear related to our dependent variable, it is going to, in almost all cases, gobble up or explain a lot of that variance in the dependent variable. So the reason the presence of the GPA covariate had such an effect going from an ANOVA without it to an ANCOVA with it is due to this linear relationship between the covariate and the dependent variable. Remember the second part of ANCOVA is adjusting the means. So look over here on the left. In the ANOVA, we have means for year one, year two, and year three. Now over here in the ANCOVA, we have adjusted means for year one, year two, and year three. So for year one in the ANOVA, the mean was 71.71. The adjusted mean over here in the ANCOVA was 74.402. For year two, it went from 75.29 to 74.104. In year three, it went from 71.29 to 69.780. So you can see that the location of our means actually changed. And the reason is, look at this. The covariates appearing in the model are evaluated at the following value, a GPA of 2.9843. So what we did is we went in with our covariate. We said, okay, what would the means be for year one, year two, and year three if all the students 
scored a GPA or had a GPA of 2.9843. Then we adjusted the means and this is what we get. This video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus, where you can get unlimited access to over 8,000 different video lectures taught by award-winning professors from the Ivy League and other top schools around the world. You can learn about nearly anything that interests you, science, literature, and yes, statistics, like this course from Professor Talithia Williams called Learning Statistics, Concepts and Applications in R. And right now, The Great Courses Plus is offering my viewers a free one-month trial. So go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash Brandon Foltz, my name, to have access to the 8,000 video lecture library or click on the link in the description below. So this has been video number two in our analysis of covariance or ANCOVA, where we took an ANOVA, looked at the results, then we inserted the covariate, did an ANCOVA, and then looked at how the output changed for both, interpreted what happened, where our sum of squares went, why it happened that way, and then how our means were adjusted on the back end. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.